And now it is time for the IBJJF Absolute Grand Prix Final. This will be a 10 minute match. Reintroducing the athlete in the blue key, weighing in at 224.6 pounds and fighting out of San Diego, California, representing Atos Jiu Jitsu, Kainan Duarte. And we are back here for the most anticipated match of the evening, the finals of our Absolute Grand Prix. First out here is Kainan Duarte, reigning world champion in the blue gi. And reintroducing the athlete in the white gi, weighing in at 241 pounds, fighting out of Salvador, Brazil, and representing GF team, Gutenberg Pereira. And there we see Gutenberg Pereira, owner of two submissions tonight. Flawless run, meeting another competitor who looks absolutely incredible and kind of dwarf. Man, I can't wait. They've had such dominant wins so far tonight. You know, who's going to come out on top in this one? Here we have the tail of tape of our absolute division. We have Kynan Dwarch, 24 years old, 6 foot tall, 224.6. Gutenberg, 29, 6'4", 241, about a 15 pound difference. And we are ready to rock and roll. Man, couldn't have asked for a better dream matchup, in my opinion, here on the finals of our absolute Grand Prix. What a pleasure to be watching these guys go at it. Like we said, about a 15 pound difference separates them. So when looking at their dominant performances um, at the World Championships, obviously they did not meet, but now we get to see these two um, world finalists together here today. What I like about both of these guys, you can see right away is their, their precision is on point. So we have some big movements, but nothing is not calculated. Looks like there's a little, it almost looks like they're scanning each other, right? <laughs> kind of like looking at the position, scanning, seeing what the intention might be, seeing uh, holes, seeing where they might be able to make some advantages happen. Goomberg with a very powerful grip on that pant. There, that pant, pant leg, what am I going to say there? <laughs> on the pants of Kainan Duarte. He does not want to give that up because you do not want to give Kainan Duarte open space, right? That's what he thrives in is if you look to reset, that's when he moves forward and closes the space so quickly. Mm. Yeah, and I do, you think of like pant cuff, right? That's a thing. <laughs> he like moves the pant cuff past and throws legs across, and he was almost in there on a diving pass, but now inverting Gutenberg here has a grip oh, on Kynan's pants. He had a look at the back, but Kynan craftily avoids that, comes back on top, and now is in a pretty good position to start uh, enacting some passing here. Interesting switch to attacking that top foot there for a moment, and then now back into his knee cut. Nice elevation there to avoid some danger. Gutenberg and very, very agile here. Rolls through to maintain good position. Comes back to the feet and resets neutrally with nothing on the board. And, you know, we're a little over two minutes into the match, so... I think it's fair to say that these guys are into their feeling out period, maybe through their feeling out period. Calculations are still going to happen, but I think we may see a little bit more of a quick opening up now. Saw Gutenberg there with a smile on his face, a little bit of acknowledgement between these guys. like this grip with that Kynan has on his left side. He has a nice grip on the back of the armpit. A little bit of a shot there from Gutenberg, but not quite able to get in with a lot of depth. Switches to the belt, which leads Kynan to pull it right into a sweep. Kynan coming up on top. Hasn't scored yet, but now we do see the two points. Look at Gutenberg fight and get up, though. He's not accepting in on a single leg. 
I mean, that was a desperate attempt to come up by Gutenberg, and he still is trying to sit through and come up, but kind of doing such a good job maintaining top position. Beautiful sweep from Kind. Yeah, I think a very smart strategy for Gutenberg to come right into single leg X to keep that positioning with Kynan right in that mid-level because, again, with Kynan, you don't want him far where he's creating space. He's doing big Toyota-style passing, but you don't want him close in a smash passing position. We know he's very dominant there, so I think Gutenberg's best bet here is to be in more of a single leg X-style position where he can um, keep enough space while looking for his own tacks, like his own sweeps and things of that nature. See the referee watching closely here too on Gutenberg's left leg, making sure it's not passing over the center line, which would uh, which would be reaping and would be obviously an illegal position here for Gutenberg. So being very careful to keep that left leg in good position. Although now with that lapel over, <laughs> actually I think could make it a little more difficult to keep that leg out of danger. Yeah, interesting use there of tying up the lapel. Hoping to slow down kind of any way he can. Of course, now the onus is on Gutenberg to make up those two points. Somehow, some way, he's got a nice grip of the pants that he opts to release there. And maybe go back to the well after he makes a gri uh, grip adjustment with the lapel, it seems. Yeah, kind of doing a great job here, keeping a very strong base. He notice he keeps his left knee on the ground, so he has a wide base, but at the same time, not standing up onto his feet where he would be at a little bit more of a risk to be elevated and maybe switch into a lot of sweet patterns for Gutenberg because once that position gets going, or the toe hold like we saw look at just for a moment, once that position gets going, it is very difficult to regain your balance with someone as talented as Gutenberg. So even though there's a slow to the action, I think Kynan's patience here is really gonna pay off. See Gutenberg really now using that left leg to pressure into the bicep of Kynan, hoping to further off balance him. And again, kind of not rushing through this position at all. Kind of looking up, checking the score, checking the time, and knowing that if he does pop up to his foot too soon, that this could become a very dangerous position. And we see now that was probably the best look Gutenberg had at a sweep. Knocked Kynan down to his butt, but kind of able to pop right back up. And both athletes awarded one penalty each for inactivity. I find that an interesting call to make right after the uh, sweep attempt, right? But it kind of happened all at the same time, right? So definitely the referee was already, already kind of counting that time down as the sweep started to transpire. Some more interesting lapel work here from Gutenberg. He has the lapel wrapped around the ankle and the foot, but now passed through the back of Kynan's leg locked into his left hand, which is also keeping Kynan's right foot locked in that foot lock grip under the armpit. So everything very, very secure on Gutenberg's left side, Kynan's right side, which begs the question of what's going to happen on the right side of the body, right, or the right side of Gutenberg's body, because when you're talking about off-balancing your opponent to look for a sweep, we're going to have to address that right side. And I think he was about to do that right as there was a penalty called, who's reaching through underneath to grab the pant leg with his right hand. I would say this is maybe the time where Kynan is going to have to start considering those penalties because if it were deemed that he is being inactive and Gutenberg is not, we would see a change on the scoreboard, right? Because the next penalty would put two points in Gutenberg's favor, and uh, that would definitely change the trajectory of things. So Kynan may look to be a little bit more active here in these last two, and a, two minutes and 15 seconds. Yeah, 
Eric Gutenberg definitely staying very active here, can, trying to continue knocking Kynan down. He's not scoring off it, but what he is doing is ideally in his mind staying away from being called for a penalty and almost up now there was Gutenberg for a moment. But a big transition for Kynan too, leading into a pass. And that's what Kynan does, he's so patient. It can be very frustrating for the player on bottom and then he finds an opening and gets exactly where he wants to be. That was a very interesting position because he has Gutenberg kind of trapped in this twisted position. You see Gutenberg kind of nodding with frustration because Kynan has his arm behind the head, almost like similar to feeling like a half Nelson, right? And has that far arm wrapped up. If Gutenberg turns away, exposes his back, and he really can't turn towards Kynan because, his, because of the position of Kynan's right arm. Only one minute left on the clock here, and I think, just like you said earlier, Chase, we're going to see a lot of Kynon's patience uh, reintroduced here once again in this position. He does not need to rush. He's definitely in the dominant position, and Gutenberg is, is going to be forced to move. Scores an advantage for his efforts there. Two advantages, it seems, and back in his passing position with 40 seconds left on the clock. That moment's pretty devastating for Gutenberg as even a sweep will not tie things. He's going to really have to sell out for a submission here. It looks like that's what he's looking for here, Chase, trying to extend that ankle as much as he can. As mentioned, he's got to watch that left foot. It's being looked at very closely by a referee. Ten seconds left here. Looks like Kynan will be our first ever Absolute Grand Prix champion. Your winner in IBJJF Absolute Grand Prix champion is Kainan Duarte, representing Octos Jiu Jitsu. There you have it, Kainan Duarte takes home the prize.